Hello and everyone here watching now or later, Helian here along with Rocky over. And yes, I once again forgot to turn the stupid light on. I keep forgetting that. And yeah, welcome back to uh Heart Space Shipbreaker. It has been quite a while since we played this, and yeah. It says so right here among the hotfixes, progression reset. So yeah, we'll have to play through the entirety of Act 1 again. But after that we'll have access to Act 2 immediately, as well as some other stuff here. That apparently they've made the, the habitats three-dimensional, so we we can just we should be able to move around in them probably. And this armadillo utility rig repair. A vintage ship that could be your ticket to freedom, salvage parts to fix up the rig and get it ready for gate travel. So, basically, a uh, screw you, I'm out of here type of deal, I'm guessing. <laughs> let's see, but yeah, since we're playing this for story, let's play on the easiest mode, which is open shift here. Uh, that, uh, open shift allows players to play at their own pace. Please select below if you'd like to use the standard option drain. Have preferred reduced. So, let's have it reduced, so we spend the least amount of time going back and forth. And it should give us the intro now, but let's see if we can skip that, since we've already seen it, like, I think twice now. Yeah, a bit of background on this game. This is the first game that I streamed online before I started uploading to YouTube uh, for the backups. And yeah, here's talking about uh, ta -da -ta, industrialized much of the solar system, deteriorated in, you know, into a hive of scum and villainy. People have started breaking up ships because, yeah, there's too much junk flying around. And yeah. There's no good news at all here. And the third bill past due, credit transfer declined, payment required, any rations to spare. Basically, the planet is starving and in full debt. So, uh, yeah, we want to get out as quickly as possible. Uh, open shifts. Keeping all of that. In Might as well go with that. Uh, go for chicken. I know Entomotarian. I still have no idea what that means. And yeah, all of these. This bullshit that is. Today would be fully illegal. We're all skipping training because we've already done that. And away we go.
Hello Cutter 9346-52. Your automated Lynx onboarding experience will now begin. Please observe this important message. Safe. Screw that. Yeah, we already saw that. If you are interested in seeing more of it, it is in the uh, weekend wackiness <laughs> playlist. It is, should be easy enough to find, but just by searching hard space in there. But basically what happened there was, yeah, your basic intro video that you'd get for almost every job that you see. The only difference being that at the end you get killed so your body can be cloned. Yeah. And you are probably missing their property now. Yep. And for all of that, we have to pay all of this. A debt, tra a debt trap. Let's see, how many zeros is that? One, two, three, six. Yeah, we are a billion in debt. Sarcastic. Don't you dare play a sheer, sheer full tune with me, computer. I'm sorry. Basically, every shipbreaker, it's the typical stuff. You get It gets praised into the high heavens as the way to make money. But by the time that you're up there, you discover you're basically a slave. Yeah. Hello, shipbreaker. Overnight genetic backup complete. Pattern deviation nominal. Have a good day. Nominal? Yeah, basically yeah, we're really... playing as a clone. Or yeah, it technically like a series of clones. Of this. Uh -huh. Yeah, this, this is different. They're certainly different. New message received to 52 from Link's app. Link ship mark. Oh, ad, admin. I, for a moment I thought it said Admiral. New ship, macro light cargo. The, the term. Basically telling us that we have access to this type of ship now. The Kleinco mackerel is the most common ship model in the colonies. The light cargo model is used for civilian cargo and can contain a wide variety of objects. The station hopper transport is outfitted with air terminals. Electrical safety is advised. Our ships are simply the best, like no one ever was. <laughs> Recent safety reports are wrong. Grander Masterson, Junior Marketing Associate, Kleinco. Let's see, from Lynx Edu. Okay, hazard level 2. Lynx is committed to ensuring shipbreakers are exposed to hazard level in ships only according to their proficiency level and median estimated emo emo the emotional adjustment time should death occur related to these hazards. If you have reached clearance, if you have reached clearance for hazard level 2, you may begin to encounter fire hazards in the form of fuel or flaming objects. Causing Lynx equipment or salvage goods to be damaged by fire hazard will result in credit deductions, as will damage to or destruction of your Lynx spare. A spare being a clone, of course. And yeah, of course, they put their equipment over the person. But, uh, minimum payments are due by 10 a.m. Solar standard each. Failure to pay is considered a breach of contact. Thank you for your hard work and cooperation. Basically, that's all the medically deducted, and hello. Okay, this is nice. Not fully what I expected, but it is still nice. We can head back to bed to tell them to go fuck off. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Employee terminal. Um, can look out the window. Okay, that down there is where we'll be uh, working. And actually, that, that little... The orange thing, no, not the orange, the yellow thing there between the pylons. That is the old hab. So where the heck are we now? Some sort of apartment in the ring around the place? Good question. And also, why are you dirty the window? Uh, we haven't had the chance to, so I'm thinking that might be uh, from the previous person or spare that was in here. Let's see, what can we see here? Messages, certification, structure modes, the, sc the scanner, financial relief program. Everything important and good in this world comes with, uh, comes with a price. Each privileged person who joins our family to become a shipbreaker comes with significant costs. 
Fortunately, the legs shoulders the burden of these costs temporarily in order to let you hit the iron running and begin training stress-free. This cost sharing is handled through our innovative employee financial relief program, our bullshit, because they are still dumping the full. Actually, in the list there, there were some things that were pretty obviously arbitrary arbitrary costs joined in. So basically it's just a, they're they're polishing up a third of a scam here. Links kiosk where we can buy some other some stuff. Boss were working. And that one was the one we saw earlier. Missed one. Clear as mud. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm here to walk you through the process and soon enough I'm gonna introduce you to some of the other shipbreakers. Most of them are willing to help you out too. All right, let's start a new shift and pick your first ship to work on. Okay, the sound is three-dimensional as well. Uh, the core links home. Uh, what can we do with this? Oh, okay, we can swap out our posters. Wait, <laughs> nice that little detail. Weird. Hmm? So, something weird with one of the post options. See. Right. Decor, Decor, home, home links, links, live, laugh, salvage. I call bull. Uh, this, uh, we have the workstation. There's something with this game that turns me very cynical. Yeah, because it is a, a cynical game at the back of it. And we can put some stickers on our stuff here. Oh, wait, what? Under reacting, self units 15 class 1 reactors. Okay, basically, oh, to unlock uh, all of these stickers, it tells you what to do. And we already have this one, so we should be able to put that. Yeah, yeah there we go. Okay, that's all we can do here at the moment. We can look at our suits and the posters. Seems we can't do anything with the suit itself. Okay. And yep, let's start our shift then. We start by selecting a ship to work on. We have the little human too. I'm not I pronounced that wrong. Caustic, Longieri 4, Nox Maru, and the Corpulent Roberts. Okay. A station hopper to normal ones and the cargo let's go for the cargo one and there's nothing in the bay to clean up so there is nothing for us to lose like that was going to warn us about okay, let's see. We should be able to just reel ourselves in closer I do like that everything now has a startups thing and let's see, did they mess with our my controls as well? It doesn't seem so. Okay, ba basically what we have to do is to collect stuff and throw them in the right bin. The more valuable it is, the higher up in the... Well, the diff Down there is the high value stuff like those antennas. The nacelles must also go there. Other... Yeah, valuable materials go into the, the processor, and the rest gets junked. Well, like, uh, remelted into something new that's useful. Okay. And yeah, you can see at the top how much of the ship is still left to be salvaged. We have our grapple beam that we can use to move things around, but of course this thing weighs a lot more than us. So uh, we'll only be pulling ourselves toward it Check like this. Check out your HUD when you've got an object grappled. It shows you the mass of the object and whether you can move it or not. Yeah, whether you can move it is the the bar on the. Uh... Okay, it hit something there. Yeah, you can see the bar that's now fully in the red. That's if we can move it. And only if it's to the left, we can move, uh, move it around. Otherwise, we will head straight towards it ourselves. Let's see. 
I don't think they'll be giving us anything with an atmosphere inside just yet. So we will be safe from that. And, um, some random junk around. Okay. Let's get started that. with our cutter. Hmm? I think I saw a few bottles of soda. Yeah, yeah. Or, what is that I don't of think you? that is soda, but... It, it behind you. Yeah, a space Pepsi. Oh, gods. Yeah, let's see. Wait. Space Pepsi? I guess that oh, means that the uh, cola lost the, the war. No, no. Pepsi man. <laughs> That's who we want him is in space. Pretty sure the character has already been in space. How either I'm not either I'm not remembering the controls correctly or they or they're not giving us the uh, wide uh, cutting head for this thing just yet which wouldn't surprise me uh, yeah we need to cut this thing apart into smaller bits which is mostly done by well destroying these cutting points to get everything to let go of each other. And you were going to say something? Oh, no, I remember. I would say, be right back. <laughs> You're distracted. Okay. The last time I played this... Oh, overheating. Oh, oh there it is. There's the mode. We... I missed the, the button in the corner for the mode swap. So, by internet law, probably one person at least has already complained at me about missing that. Let's see. There yeah, should be most things inside. Oh, yeah, I missed two. Uh, yeah, a lot of things have the habit of just floating away from each other as a sort of standard. Not everything will detach as uh, willingly. And yeah, last time I streamed this, uh, Drakir wasn't co-commentating with me yet, I think. Not the first one, no. And I'm back. Welcome back. Okay. Now we give that a shove towards the processor. Oh, bloody! That was hmm? cold! I felt there's some shot of ice landing on my shed and sat on it. <laughs> and yeah, I, yeah, I was not ready for that. Yeah, not the hot seat today, huh? <laughs> not exactly. But it's not too bad, just, yeah, I got surprised. Okay, Control will just keep chatting at us for a lot of this. That will eventually start getting annoying. I don't know if there's a way to, to mute them. It's probably against the uh, company policy to mute. But oh well, let's see. Why is it... Okay, the square is where showing where the grapple will latch on to. And apparently it doesn't care about whatever this is. Which apparently doesn't even move. And okay, now it also shows how much credit how many credits something is worth when you show it in. I don't think that was in before. It no, might have been either. because there now there is just a lot going on on screen. We have our health, our fuel, our suit integrity our fu our suit in integrity and what is that noise? And our oxygen down the middle of the screen. We have our headlights. No real use, no uh, extreme use for it at the moment, but things will get darker in later ships. Let's and see. I just realized something. Hmm? Did this, this game have a Halloween update? 
It had one long ago. It, it is technically still an early access, I think. But it did have a Halloween update some years ago. Or some years might get... Uh, last year, I think, it had one. I see some potential fire hazards in there, so watch out, Cutter. Yeah. Be careful not to cut or bump oxygen tanks, fuel tanks, or fuel lines. If there are flammable objects nearby, those flames can spread pretty quick like. Yeah, because apparently they use a fuel so uh, a fuel type that will just burn in space without any oxygen. Pretty quick like Good sir! Don't you know the pre pro proper word is quickly? <laughs> Who the heck says quick like? Ooh, something got pushed aside there. Or did I just imagine Wait. that? I guess quick like is a word you're it's been wrongly used here. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a country type. So yeah, he's going to talk like that. Now we can remove the side paneling on this side. Well, most of it at least. This rapper really isn't interested in those things. Okay, we can also move things. We should, okay, we would have been able to move if we given had been given access to the tethers yet, but apparently not. Let's see. There are these lights that we can pluck off, and they are. Okay, a thousand credits. That's more than previously, I think. But compared to how much a panel like this is worth, that's literal chunk change. As we'll see once it and its brother pass through. Yeah, 15,000. And then 18,000 as well. Or is that the next one there? It can be a bit hard to tell which is which. Especially since didn't... sometimes things are connected to each other. And you don't you lost some money on that. But apparently it was some a light still attached to the chunk you brought in. Yeah, one of the first ones. Anyways, in these first ones, we can just tear out the uh, the fuel like that. Without it getting damaged and everything. And I was thinking a bit too highly of these, because these nacelles are just attached by these cutting points. Which means that they're easy enough to remove. It's a lot more random debris floating around now as well. Okay, and off you go. Yeah, 70,000 for a nacelle. And you forgot the light again. <laughs> yeah, it is only a thousand. It's basically a Snickers bar. And we can do that anyways. <laughs> yeah, if we worked on a time limit, then maybe an extra thousand would be useful this early on. But uh, yeah, since we're not working on a time limit, it is yeah literally just cents. Got a little bit lucky that these the gate that these uh, the doors were here because not every one of these mackerels will have them, which means that you'll have to cut your way into the sides of the ship. And yeah, it isn't always it isn't always obvious where fuel tanks and such will be. And yeah, as you can guess, you accidentally hit those with your cutter. And is going to get really heated inside real quick. Yeah. Might as well pull those off. Over here we have the airlock, which is very valuable, so we do not want to damage that at all. Because it is possible to damage things. You can see those five bars on the light, that's basically its endurance. If that gets too low, it becomes useless and, uh, well, worthless. So best not to let it bump into too many things too hard. It's not like they'll explode at the slightest touch or anything. But still, be careful with some things. As the physics of this game can be a bit... Uh, 
playful, I'll say. As a certain highlight that is still on the channel will probably tell. A highlight? It... Wait. The, re the reverse rockets? Ah, uh, yeah. I, I was there, wasn't I? Uh, yeah. You. You. Is it? Oh, you're still attached. Yeah. Careful not to hit that. Luckily, only the where the uh, dots are showing up will be cut. Go. Uh, this should be movable. There we go. Sometimes these panels can be a bit annoying to get off of each other. On bigger ships, I've noticed that some parts will stick together even if there's no actual contact between them. I'm guessing slash hoping that they'll have fixed that. Okay. Also, I'm, I'm shoving th things like this with the F button. It's not very powerful. I... But it gets things moving. Let's get you out. And now we can cut off the last piece. Okay. Do not want these to go into the incinerator, because then we'll lose it. And now we have the back end cut off. And we still have the ceiling plat uh, bits. There is also the thruster cap here that we could cut loose, but it's part of the uh, assembly here, which also goes into the processor. So we can just get it in there as one piece and it'll still count them as separate. Or it'll still pay for them as if they were separate. If, as if they were separated. And yeah, now that... Now that the side is off, we can now move the skeleton around. Because it, it still weighs quite a lot, but it weighs a lot less than before. Cargo hatch. Uh, we lost a light. It's not a, a very big loss again. Okay. Cut points. Then this can go down there. Oh. Yeah, that's what happens when something is moving nearby uh, that is moving a bit too fast. It didn't go in. Come on, latch on. When you've, when you've grappled something, uh, it will halt its movement a bit. And uh, hello there. Uh, okay, you're, the, the color that your name is being put in now makes it a bit hard to read, especially with this light here. So, uh, Lectrek? Yeah, Lectrek, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I am enjoying the game. I... I've played this game quite a few times before, on stream and off, and yeah, I, I do like it. It's like a, a sort of puzzle game, uh, in a very loose way of describing it. Because... Was it a reverse puzzle game? Eh, not really, but yeah, it, it's basically playing Surgeon Simulator on a ship, and there is just something fun about that. Let me make no one ask. Would you play Search and Simulator for stream? Maybe. Let's see. How much did that light give us? It's not going to tell us, okay? I can already imagine the chaos. It's not even saying we're getting anything for these lights. 
Okay, so I'm guessing they are not not worth it at all. Okay. It is still a bit heavy for us to move by our own, so we'll have to cut off more. Then we'll we'll have to get through the the walls and the skeleton itself. And the uh, track in the chat, uh, it's a good way of describing it. What do you think of the story so far? I've played through Act 1 before. Uh, I haven't played since the last story update. And but what I did see, I did, I did like. It is making me curious about what is going to happen. And I will try to get through Act 1 again as quickly as possible in these uh, Saturday streams. Actually, okay, that goes into the furnace, so I can just cut through it anyways. Even if it does burn up, it's not a big loss. Okay, now we have two separate parts, which are a lot more movable, as you can see. Come on, get moving. Nice and steady. It, it might complain about those little lights, but oh well. If they're not going to tell us how much they're worth, they can't be worth much. Oh, we did lose a door, but only 900 <laughs> credits. Unless those are deductions they are doing now. Like It did talk about deductions, but it, before it never did uh, reduce... Uh, it, it never did... Uh, penalize you. That was weird. Nope. It went. There they might do now. More doors. Oh, I think they're talking about the door frames. Uh, no, the ones in the door frames. Uh, let's see if they fix the quantum doors thing. If we cut in here. Cut there. And cut here. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, the doors are still inside here. I doubt that'll work. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Not sure if we'll get to see it this time since there is not enough room to cut around here. But basically, these doors that are in hidden in here, uh, they'd stay together even when split apart like this, when apart, if you'd remove them whilst they're open. So uh, yeah, you'd be uh, you'd be moving quantum locked doors. What the heck? Uh, hello, Mr. Storage Spin Pin Bin. 24k for each, and these are quite easy. They're like the couches of this game, though they are a lot easier to move around. Also, the bar, the block in the middle when we're grabbing onto something that is basically pulling it loose from the, the rest of the structure. Some things are a lot more secured than others. But most come off with enough ease. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Okay. There goes our Snickers bar. Anything else in here? No, they've already stripped out the electronics. Which means that the rest of this can go... Yeah, there's a lot of furnace stuff. There's also a lot of paneling, which goes to the processor. And we can't separate these at the moment. We can't oh, cut nice. it. Yep. And there goes sure. the quite idea. There is the there's the glass here that we could cut out. Though it isn't much. So I cut there, cut there. A lot of it is also lost just from cutting it. Let's have a look at how much this is worth. Is it free? No, it's not. <laughs> Pardon? Given? 
This half is loose. I think it's loose. the wrong part to do. Oh, never mind. Okay, there used to be one block. Holy! Okay, tw that, okay, that is worth a hell of a lot more. Glass used to be pretty useless. Well, have you seen the thickness? Yeah. Don't take that out of context, people. I'm. Li you saw. You see yourself. That's. It's not a glass That's... wall. That. Well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a glass wall, but not a thin one. Yeah, that is a lot more useful uh, these days now. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I think we are talking about if, if you were to have a gl glass on a ship, it would not be thin. And photos, they made some yeah, thirty glass windows. Yeah, on the internet, there's no space station. Okay. Uh, in general, like I said at the start. The most valuable things go into the barge. I have lost where the barge is. There's the barge. Then the next level is the processor. And then there's the furnace. And basically, if you have something to stuck together that would go in either the furnace or the processor, chuck it into the processor. Because in general, I think, or at least it was before, is that uh, anything that goes into the processor is worth 10 times as much as anything into the furnace. And yeah, we're getting a lot of credits there. There is some... Uh, I'm oh, you're not hoping those are not penalties. Yeah, we didn't... We, well, we cut off the majority of it. At least. Okay. But yeah, there is still... I'm not going to cross face this time. There's still a little, a few little bits floating around, but nothing worth spending much time on. So let's end the shift and see what we did. Okay, 94% got 1.5 million off of that. Uh, we have 27, uh, 270 links tokens now, which are used for upgrades. Let's see, airlock console destroyed, li 12 lights destroyed. Okay, it doesn't seem that they do. It seems that they don't actually penalize you for that. It'll just, it just says you, this is how much you've lost. Some glass, 10 kilos of it, not much. Some aluminium, but that's the rest just... Of... Yeah. That's a lot more. of kilos of aluminium. Yeah, it, it, it is space, of course, so it has to be very thick on the outside. Yeah. We've got 634 MP. And we got links tokens, link tokens, and a repair kit. So yeah, a good haul. Many of these link, many of those macros you can get one or two million off of easily. Hello, ship breaker. Please enjoy this inspirational message. The last ten percent of a job takes as much energy as the first ninety percent. So think of what it takes to hit one hundred and ten percent, and aim for that. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, daily fees. At the moment, there's total in half uh, a million on its own. So basically, if you make if you're not making half a million every day, you start loot. You start accruing accruing more debt. Editor interest zero point one percent sounds small, of course, but not when you're dealing with a freaking billion. Next up is the cutting tool rental, that is the biggest thing. Then the grapple tool rental, because of course they won't give us our equipment to work with. They have to well, rent it to us. Uh, Bailey's uh, scanner, helmet, suit, and just nickel and diming us for every little thing so we, they can keep us enslaved. Okay, anything new here? No new messages. Let's see. Okay, we missed this earlier. Kitchen. Well, that's no. what I asked about chicken. <laughs> okay, well, that doesn't look very appetizing in there anyway, so I don't blame our character for not eating it. We can screw around with these as well. 
then let's let's just leave it empty. Okay. Uh, 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 wait. Did I say we have our own vending machine? Yep. So even oh. for our own food, we have to pay extra still. Nothing to upgrade with our equipment. So it is still the same. So, new shift. There's nothing worthy on this thing to keep. So let's get a new one. There's Skaldaveri Mark V. Okay. Yes, there's nothing worthwhile to keep in the place. So clean it out all you will. Okay. Everything's starting up again. Gunner, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce you to the rest of the crew in our sector today. Sound off, everyone. Hey, Rook. Name's Lou. I was the worm until you showed up, so thank you. <laughs> now I get to do the hazing. Come on, Lou. What are you talking about? We don't do that. Welcome aboard and don't listen to her. I'm Jane. Okay. I'm Kaiser. Uh, Kai? I think your mic's still messed up. Oh, uh, yeah. How about now? Better. Ah, uh, hey. I'm Kaito. Kai. Mike's still busted, huh? Yeah, still waiting on the wreck to get him. Heaven forbid they give us functional gear. All right, Lou. I'm sure they're working on it as fast as they can. Anyway, Cutter, I've just added you to the official sector comm channel. It gets lonely out here, so don't hesitate to check in with each other from time to time. All right, that's enough chin wagon. Let's get back to it. Talk to you soon, Cutter. We were out. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. Later, Rook. Yeah, that's some of the other characters that we'll be chatting with from now and then. The cells are still very vulnerable on the side here. Like, I'm guessing these things are mostly to shuttle people uh, to and from a planet and whatever moons it has. Or orbit. Anything in orbit. Yeah. Because those things would... <laughs> they, they would get smashed by any micrometeor, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I don't think these are meant for deep space. Not at all. Okay. Yeah, look. Again, no atmosphere. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. Oh, a bit too early there. Okay. 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 When something has red blocks th like that, I think it means that, uh, uh, yeah, that's at the point where it'll get dangerous to handle. And yeah. Okay. No cargo this time, but there are a bunch of chairs to move around. And here comes the tune that sounds a lot like Mass Effect to me. If the music is audible or not. It should be. It just makes me think of Firefly. Okay. Again, cut away all of the cutting points, and then we can start on everything else. This is just a single door, so we can't quantum uh, entangle this thing. And yeah, si since we are still at the uh, low certificate level, a lot of the really dangerous stuff has been removed already, or these re these ships were just found or reworked by someone else or something. That yeah, they just dragged over for. Well, we have found a lot of old food and as you saw earlier, sodas. Yeah. Unopened hey. sodas. As Oh dear, I just realized. 
It would be annoying if you accidentally cut open an unopened soda in space. Yeah, it would instantly eject all of the soda and it would also instantly freeze. Yeah. It might end up freezing on your visor or something else. Yeah. Luckily, the little junk bits aren't really too interactable with things. Famous lost words. Okay, just plucking everything loose from each other. It'll mean a, quite a few things moving around. But... Yeah, at least we won't accidentally throw them away like this. Let's see. You're still connected. So let's do something about that. And only a few ones left there. Okay, now everything should be loose. Well, at least on the inside here. I don't remember this. Hmm? What, the scanner? What do you do? Yeah, I did not. I don't. I did not recall that. You could do that. Is that new? Uh, no, that's been in the game since the start. It's basically to keep an eye uh, out for things. You, we can upgrade it later to uh, show more useful things. At the moment, it only shows the cutting points, the structural stuff, and such. Well, what useful for finding out. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to say, I won't be surprised if I either missed it while I gather my food, or you during this thing that I was with you during this, you didn't use it at all. Yeah. It's one of the two. Now, I've played this game a good amount that I don't you need it too much. Like, this for we have structural, we have systems and objects. The later, those two we still have to buy or get access to. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, we have to, we have to buy those because, of course, uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, let's move you a bit more before we start cutting here, just in as a precaution. There we go. Now uh, this should come off. Yep, it does. Send you the right way. And then we can get to work on plucking everything out. Most, I'm mostly grabbing the lights now just to see how high of a percentage I can get of everything salvaged. Boom. Okay, just give it a shove. I just remembered. Didn't you accidentally during last time we gave play this send something to Earth by mistake? Probably. <laughs> there it likely would have burned up in the atmosphere anyways. Hopefully. No, if the atmosphere was gone, uh, we'd be seeing a lot less blue. Then again, we're not seeing a lot of green either on whatever continent that is, or whatever's left of it. I'm trying to find a identification point. Or wait. Hmm. Yeah, I... I can't identify what that is. I think we... I think set, I know. Tried. I think I, I think that's the US and South America, but it's just been... Blooded? Yeah. It has changed. I think that's what we guessed last time we played this. Like, how many months ago? 200 months ago. No. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of the paneling. That's an aluminium panel. And is something still attached to so? Or are they just brushing against each other there? 
Okay. Inks. Actually, what are you mostly? There's a tiny bit of processor, so let's chuck you into the furnace instead. Are you able to just remove that? Yeah, we could, but it, it's only a little bit, so I wouldn't say it's really worth it to spend much time on cutting it off. They, well, they, they will probably them, complain uh, against us, but it's but only a tiny bit. It said uh, that they are t t worth ten times more. Yeah, in only a thousand yeah, credits lost there. Yeah, that would be in equal amounts. So a kilogram of stuff that goes into the barge would be worth about uh, ten kilos that goes into the processor. And yeah, 10 kilos of processor material would be the, worth the same as 100 in the um, <clears throat> in the furnace. It's not actually that. It's more just as to signify that. Uh, yeah, you primarily want stuff to go into the processor and the barge. Chip has turned quite a bit. Come on. Yeah, there, there is suction to the uh, furnace and processor, so if you get too close to it, you will get sucked into it and processed yourself. That also means that if a, a chunk drifts too close to it, uh, yeah, it is likely to get pulled in whether it belongs there or not. Okay, this part is... Drifting a bit close to the furnace. No, no you don't. Keep moving. Now, with some of the larger ships that stick more into the back of the bay, uh, you will have a bigger chance of losing things into the, the furnace. But for now, they're... Everything is manageable enough. Okay, another thousand nanocarbon lost in exchange for a few ten thousand scrap. You are rushing against skeleton and some loose paneling. I think I just imagine the chaos if you accidentally throw. Something explosive into the furnace. Yeah, let's try to avoid doing that. Actually, that made me think wonder something. Like, would that not explode if you drop it into lava? Uh, what explode in? Dynamite. Hmm. TNT. The yeah, I know. It, it would depend. Like, if you did that with C4, it wouldn't do anything because that requires a specific trigger to explode. Which is why they put those trigger caps into it. Uh, not sh TNT itself, uh, that would probably blow up from the heated. Because it, it doesn't require a specific trigger. Alright. Okay. The doors are still in here, so we'll have to do a bit of surgery to get them out. And we'll see if the quantum door thing is still a thing or not. We're low on fuel. Through the gun! Valuable object deposited. Okay, just slowly float over because our this the thrusters aren't too powerful at the moment. But we can just slingshot ourselves towards this thing. Yeah, he did that once and cracked his own visor on impact with the door. Yeah. So yeah, do keep an you do keep an eye on your own speed with things. Yeah, was it even though that the salvage of a flawless just you a little bit of clumps when and going back to the door? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, at the top of the screen with probably been 
pretty obvious so far is the uh, progress of how much we've uh, salvaged. And also a timer, it seems. Okay. And yeah, yellow is what we have salvaged. Red is what has been destroyed, which has been only a tiny little bit so far. Extremely little, actually. Yeah. Okay. And there's one of the doors. And let's get rid of the junk before we lose track of it. Deposit accepted. Yeah, jump chains, but still. We're going for a high amount of salvage this time at least. Okay, salvage goal three. Okay. Not free yet. Okay. Are you still going... You're still held captive. That should finish that. And you are not moving, which suggests to me that the quantuming is still in effect. Is that good or bad? Yeah, it depends on who you'd ask. Since it is a bit immersion-breaking. But it means that these two doors are just stuck together no matter what. We can't move one without the other. So... Come on. It's, it's stuck between the doors. Oh, it's still held there. Yeah, even though nothing is touching this door anymore, it's just not moving because this one is still ha is being held. So let's do a cut there, there, and still stuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, th this game isn't. Uh fully done yet. Raw material process. Credits deposited. <laughs> okay, are you ghost clipped into something? I think I know what. It must be that one. There we go. Yeah, that, that it was the obvious one. Yeah, quantum doors. They're <laughs> just stuck together no matter what. And apparently they don't want to get shoved either. Okay, I'll just have to fling you then. What? Oh, you did! Oh, I'll put your frog there. <laughs> okay. Now, we should have everything of actual value out of this thing now. Valuable object processed. Credit awarded. Door of three, <laughs> three hundred and ten. 311 uh, credits. Yeah, that was not worth it cutting it out. Mm. No. We can't move this thing on its own still. So we're going to play a bit of Surgeon again. And again, this entire game is basically playing Surgeon with ships. These parts should be fully... Nope, there's a little bit left. Yeah, the, the cutter is pretty well programmed it's in that it'll stick to only whatever it is aimed at uh, for cutting, unless, uh, your, unless your cursor is very close to two things at once. Like, if I were to... I'll, I'll show this right here. If I do that, it doesn't cut through the sidebars because those aren't a part of the panel that I was aiming at. Okay, get moving. There we go, and then this oh. should get... Yeah. Get over there. 
and that leaves only the cockpit left. What is that floating that looks like a can? No idea, and we can't interact with it anyways. What's that, that one I talked about? Uh, it's that one, the orange. And it looks a bit like a microphone. Either microphone phone or... What is Some sort of canister? Or maybe some electrical equipment. The log lady did not crack your visor. Yeah, it, it simply won't. The rappler simply won't recognize these little bits. Probably because they're just not worth it. Yet they gladly accept uh, when you throw expired food to the barge. They won't. I think if you do manage to grab those, that the it says to go for the furnace or something, because that stuff is likely expired by like a, a decade or two. I feel like, like in the last time we played, you actually did throw large package of food into the barge and got money for it. Maybe. And anyway, I think you also commented that they were probably reselling it despite it was old. I wouldn't be surprised if they'd end up in our food. Is there any of it floating around here still? A food package furnace. And, oh, hello. Okay. I would have missed this one. Get in there. Yeah, you can't always rely that something will end up wherever you throw it, especially if it might bounce into something. Is there anything left in here? Anything worthwhile, that is. It doesn't look like it. So, into the processor it goes. There's still some bits of glass and such, and, well, the furnace's bits. But, eh. Yeah. The rest of it is worth way too much more to spend uh, yeah, time on getting the chump change out. And there's still a bottle Bye -bye. floating in there. Yeah, it sees. 32,000 on Caneno Cabin, Carbon, 7,000, 9,000 lost. And then another 22,000 in another more paneling. So, yeah, basically just chuck it in there. It is worth, worth way more. Yeah, you, if you did split it up, you probably had a smaller red dot up in the corner. Maybe, but yeah. We still got 95%. And 1.4 million. A bit, a bit less than last time, but oh well. Okay. Upgraded. Rank 4. And with that, we should get access to more ships and more hazard levels. Good morning, Cutter 9346-52. All the team at Lynx would like to wish you a happy and productive day. That would be a lot more believable if it wasn't a synthesized voice saying that. Okay, hazard level 3. Now qualified to handle electrical hazards during salvage. Due to regulatory rollbacks introduced in 2299, Link Salvage does not do a preliminary exam of ships to disconnect potential electrical hazards. We believe our ship breakers are well suited to handle such dangers and the long-term time savings are highly beneficial. Of course, that's the only thing they care about, not the fact that it's likely to get their ship breakers killed. Electrical components may arc when removed, impacted, or damaged, causing other objects to be electrified, including the shipbreaker themselves. This can cause damage to the Lynx spare and Lynx equipment. And, uh, new ship access, Mackerel Exolab. 
Uh, typical, uh, typically used for deep space research, the Macworld Axial Lab is outfitted with a wide array of scientific instrumentation. Extract this fragile equipment carefully and beware of electrical hazards. My predecessor Ted incorrectly stated that there were frequent electrocutions aboard Axial Labs. Actually, those electrocutions are still being investigated. Stacy Haberchuk, Marketing Manager, Kleinco. So basically, wherever you are in this world, you're getting fucked anyways. Okay. Any messages? Oh, sorry. Um, my thing was to say that it sounds like even the sign team are hyper capitalist. Let's see. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, we, we can't even go back to freaking bed. Look, now take a look at what your bed is. Yeah. Behold I think those are the same beds that we pull out of ships later. Behold, people, beds of the future. A blanket from the 18th century and a pillow from the 1900s. Okay, all of our stuff is in good condition, so no need to worry about. And yes, those were explosive charges you saw there for a moment. Again, we'll get those later. New ship. Uh, let's go for another station hopper. Well, yeah, we should probably look at the ship's names. Or sometimes they have some hilarious names. Let's see. Uh, you can see still it here. The Gallardo 12. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah, so far of the names I see, they're not being that humorous as the other streams. They, they, they probably use a random generator. Yeah. And they use a lot of so far. Okay, some of these ships will have outside shielding like this, but it's all processor stuff as well, so there's no need to cut it free, actually. We are dealing with more ships with more nacelles now. So that is already a jump in profit for us. Oh, yes, I remember. Actually, you may have seen the mentions of Shipbreaker on YouTube in the past, uh, before mm -hmm. I joined you on stream. Yeah. However, I, I, I didn't watch them, but I thought, hmm, you, at least what, at least what I thought it was, like, you break into ship, fight, get, gather loot, and may perhaps sometime fight aliens, like that, but, well. Well, except for the last one, it sort of fits. Yeah, except, uh, yeah, I didn't expect you to... Uh, to be working for a company like this. Salvage secured. Well, something more like a space wayfarer or space pirate or such. Yeah, depending on how things go, we might actually get to see that in this game someday. Ooh. Oh, I somewhat doubt it, but only time will tell. Let's see, that's the nacelles gone. I can say this. I will not blame people to becoming pirates in this universe. Yeah. Still no decompression to worry about, so we can just take the button, chuck it off. Yep. And yeah, that's how easily something can be damaged, as we saw earlier. And yeah, when it's arcing like that, you do not want to have it near your face. Okay, as the music calms down, let's like see. Yee, what might it be trying to tell us? Okay. Again with the, the Mass Effect sound music. Okay, that's this open. No. We are dealing with electrical hazards now, so you can see that the lights are actually on now. 
We can't see anything of the electricals because we don't have the system scanner. So, yeah. But again, on these smaller ships, they'll be pretty easy. They're in later ships, a funny character. Okay, <laughs> a little collectible, apparently. Wait, 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 wait. What kind of collectible? Yeah, we picked up a plush bunny. Oh. Uh, you yeah. know what? Let's call that bunny Romy. <laughs> okay. Not sure if he'd get annoyed from having a plush bunny named after him, but okay. I would consider this a revenge for, for him jump scaring me three times so far. Are you right keep, an eye, keep an eye on where the dots are showing because that is where it will crap. Let's see. And now the lights are off because we've cut everything loose. So, yeah, some sort of connect electrical connection has been broken somewhere. Let's see. Still no reactors, because those are also still considered too dangerous for us to deal with. And, yeah, very encouraging poster. What poster? This one. Oh. I, th I think this one is new. The red rays shipping to the future. Wait. Oh, those we can collect. And that we can collect? Okay. Before you could only throw these things into the barge. This should work. Yeah. Doors generally tend to keep working even if the ship is only on emergency power or whatever it is. Thank you. Now I'm, I'm extra cozy. Got my blanket. The winter one. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, this is, is kind of cozy. Yeah, it is getting to winter times again. Technically, it is winter time, but yeah, weather and temperature still tends to be f annoying. Also, fun fact, from I recently learned, I will have to double check this, if what na its name is called, but apparently this week and in three for three days, starting from yesterday till tomorrow, it's the New Year's that the Vikings celebrated. Okay. We sort of made sense though. Out. Again, I'll be have to double check it, so I'm not getting... Um, I, I was a bit very sleepy when I watched the video. Uh, let's see, is still, this still... Yep, we can grab onto stuff to hold ourselves in place. And then we can just pulse things around. And just keep chucking stuff down. Okay. To move things along maybe a bit more, I'm thinking we should stop salvaging stuff once we've hit the, the third mark on the salvage. It, yeah, it's damaged a bit. Because, yeah, we'd get more money from it all, but we, beyond that, nothing much more. Maybe some links tokens. But, hmm. Oh, missed one here. Okay, double check. All of the ones we have access to are gone. There we go. It's the first goal. Yeah, 15,000 for chair. That, either that means that all of this stuff is, is really pricey or inflation has gone through the roof of a skyscraper. Let's be honest, it's probably partial inflation in this. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. 
and I think we can both agree that some of these metal chunks are probably worth a lot. Nope. Don't care about the light, I do care about the package. Mm, well, it's stalled now, so we might as well snipe that thing off. Yep. Still a bit of pretty long rates on these. Okay. If we had tethers, we could have uh, used one of these panels to basically uh, break the cockpit loose from the rest of the ship. If that trick would still work. You mean like a club? Uh, because things can still pull on each other. If we if we had a, a panel here and we then tethered it, we put a tether on it and then send it that way, it would pull the main body over that way as well. And thus getting well, thus giving us easy access to the sides of the ship. I just had the image of you throwing the entire ship into the processing. Now, if it were possible, I w it would be fun to try uh, to see how much of a salvage we could get out of that. <laughs> so now... Cutting Point Massacre and... Oh, hello! Let's see, power cells. Yeah, gotta be careful with those, similar to how we have to be careful with the fuel cells. Right. Then we will need to pluck the lights off, by the well. Once we get tethers, I'm just going to ignore them. Yeah, that was 26 credits of uh, nanocarbon. Uh, even more. Okay. <laughs> So, again, showing how little these things are worth in comparison. Let's leave it to unset itself a bit. To clear out the processing message. Okay, now let's chuck this thing in and see how much that gives us. That is one side panel with two plates of extra shielding. And that's going in there for seven yeah, thousand. Forty two thousand. Sixty thousand. Yeah. And then okay, a bit of structure. Yeah, about sixty one thousand. You can easily lose uh, one thousand in the mix with that. Okay. Almost 100,000 for the power cell. And now with the red lights turned off, it means that the ship is basically on emergency power, I think. I think just me that has the way of recycle as much, much as possible and not let the anything go to waste. I, I, I think I have a bit of a, that kind of uh, counter mentality. Yeah, maybe more of a sort of OCD bit. Okay, let's not get too close. OCD bit. Excuse me if I come from a culture that use blood to make bread. Okay. As well pudding. And sausages. Yeah. If we had the other animal, we would try to make use of everything as possible. I think pretty sure many cultures did that. Just in modern days, they are a bit spoiled. Yeah. Okay, these things don't even react to getting to the pull and push. Actually, the fun fact about blood bread that Vikings ate, someone made it, and it tasted, it tasted bready. He could taste, he could not taste the blood, despite that it was very 
Blood red, loaf of red. So, he can be healthy, but you'll definitely get a lot of iron from it. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Okay, let's see. Is there a power cell or anything on this thing? So that's the first time we've had to cut into the wall to get in. Okay, there's probably a fuel cell here, which is why I did not want to cut into that panel. Yep. Okay, let go. not have this thing overheat because that's likely to damage it more and yeah eventually stuff will start getting damaged and become less reliable all right i'm upside down now yep okay get going nope still some bits here Shouldn't be anything useful on that left, and I need to point up because I'm upside down. Yeah, Are you sure? Stuff like that can get disorientating, so let's correct ourselves. Well, Leon, tell me this. How do you know if you're upside down or not in space? Mm, technically right, but we have... The barge there as a reference point for what is quote unquote down. And while well, we also have the planet over there. Yeah, actually, that may be really something, and I think that's uh, an oversight they've done on many sci fi movies. Wouldn't that be? Well, whenever sh ships meet each other, they seem to be always angled in the same way, like... You never see a ship run into each other, like the one looks like it's upside down or not. They always look like they are floating in the same thingish, like they are floating in water or something. Yeah, that, that, that could be... Uh, that could be because of uh, gyroscopes and such. That they had, they have a gyroscope somewhere on board to keep track of a uh, planetary down or something like that. Yeah, but that would it um, would it help when you meet out other ships in the middle of uh, nowhere, far away from the planets? Mm. Okay, last little bit there. And now, there's still something stuck. Let's see. The, when I think about it, the only ship I've seen in sci-fi so far that gets away with it is probably... Well, the Borg. Yeah, because they have... Yeah, they, <laughs> they prefer spears. Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, I think they use more cubes and such. Yeah, the, the problem I with just the, your eyes. I think the spheres are the scout ships, while the square ones are the big main ships. Yeah. And yeah, when I have a cube and a sphere, well, yeah. No up, there's no other uh, which is the up or down. Doesn't matter with those shapes. Well, with the tubes it works, because they could be at an angle. Hey, point taken. Okay, almost at the third mark, though we are, we've almost blocked this thing completely. So you might as well pluck its last feather as well. Power junction box. Those things will almost always spark from my <clears throat> from my uh, experience, no matter if the power is on or off. 
So it's a good thing to keep those for later, once there's nothing for them to damage. Okay. Fuel Low fuel. Uh, running out of fuel isn't like a complete death sentence or something. Because we can still use the grapple to move around once that does happen. Okay, some more panel. <clears throat> Consoles. Okay. Hmm. Maybe with the credits in this game, I should think more of one credit being like one cent. Then, then it, yeah, then those lights would be more like uh, ten bucks instead of a thousand. Actually, the, hmm. yeah, we don't know uh, know what to co compare cents to, do we? So, if cents used the dollar sign, I think we have an idea what to compare it to. Nothing else. Okay, power box. And okay, no sparking this time. And the rest just goes into the processor. I just realized why does so many sci-fi oh. things seem to think that the, the future currency will be called credit? I think credit is already used in a lot of places for things like uh, one's credit score and such. Let's see. Hmm, I guess. Yes, it, it, it has a weird taste in my mouth. I almost forgot about the glass. Yeah, okay, this time we got it out in one chunk. Let's see how much you are worth. No, the heck! You could, you could crush someone with it without breaking it. Okay, fifty-five thousand. More, more fifty-six rounded up. But yeah, still valuable to pull the glass out. I, I'm pretty sure previously glass was basically worthless. Okay, now we just wait for it to run through. And there we go. 2,000, uh, no, not 2 million. <laughs> nice. Uh, mastery points, MP from credits. Okay, so that is a good reason to keep going since we get uh, credit, we get mastery points toward from the credits. Um, they, uh, they're used in the dollar sign. Okay, so it is. Hmm. Okay, I'll have to look out or calculate how much, uh, how much one M mastery point is worth. Uh, it looks like over a thousand, something over a thousand is worth one MP. Sure, sure, the machine god. Good morning, Cutter. It's time to begin your work day. Okay, new hat poster available, customized to that. So, sender undisclosed, read Bunny Character D. Bunny Character D is a popular chilled entrance video character, an anthropomorphic pink rabbit. It was one of dozens of characters introduced as part of Pan Terran Media Conglomerate's Fun Friend and Animals pilot program. The program featured a wide range of stylized and all uh, based characters and heavy psychological analysis was used to determine which of these characters were most popular. Despite appearing very similar to Bunny characters A, B, C, E and G, Bunny character D was determined to be the most popular among kids aged 4 to 12. Interest link Bunny character F, while being the least popular with this age group, reportedly due to disturbing facial features, provided most proved most popular among those aged 25 to 40 and is featured in a series of videos and games for adults. Several of the program as characters, notably Moose character, Pigeon character, A to C, and Salmon character, were determined to be unpopular because they were based on animals that had been extinct for over a hundred years. 
Wait, pigeons went extinct? Okay. And moose and salmon. Okay. I'm calling a crusade against lynx. Well, they're, they're not the only corporation fucking things over here. And okay. really, they, they can't even come up with names, or is it that basically every word in the dictionary has likely been copyrighted or something? Possibly, and actually, I should not be crusading against Lynx. I should crusade against every damn company in that world. <laughs> Let's see. In their latest video series, Bunny Does the Right Thing, Bunny Character D opens an ice cream shop in New York. However, after blight rats infest the shop, the health administration forces the shop to close. Many of Bunny Character D's friends encourage them to apply for government uh, small business assistance to help them get a new shop. However, a wise government official helps Bunny Character D understand that the best thing they can do is not apply as this would unnecessarily draw valuable finances away from the government that could be used for the betterment of society elsewhere. The moral of the story is to trust in market forces and in government uh, to make the best decisions for everyone. AKA is propaganda. <sighs> right. Have we got a war, Maris? No one expects the war mammoths, boy. No one. Okay. Let's just have that hovering over us. Any messages? No messages. It'll it'll likely uh, poke us if there is something to uh, do there. A soda bunny. Nothing to repair. Uh, you notice the bunny on your PC, right? Yeah, there. It's an ugly thing. Yeah. Okay, nothing new here. Still no uh, sponge or anything to clean this thing up. I'm guessing if we leave enough of a ship in there, we will able to see it from here. The heck was that flash? Good question. What the heck was that? Is that a reactor blowing up or something? Hmm. Maybe they'll talk about it soon. New day, new ship. Still no fourth grades. Let's see. King of Hurst. The Phil Singer 15. The Western Europe and Europa. Queen of Panther. No Queen new Panther? types. Okay. Queen of Panther sounds like an awesome <laughs> title. Okay, low on fuel. Because they're too cheap to, uh, to even refuel us. Pinging you on a closed channel. If our crew ever gets to mingle face to face, we should crack some beers and share what we do when we get out of the red and start actually making profit from salvaging. Hard to figure when anyone's gonna hit that point, though. Weaver's been at this 20 years, but he slipped back into dead things to form my training. DT sends most of her money back home to New Manila. Transfer goes through links, of course, and the fees are huge. Kaito, well, he's a good person, uh, but just hasn't really taken to the work. He's been warned that he's a low earner. And me? I'm trying to get there as fast as I can. Once I hit zero, I'm gonna work maybe another year or two and just bank it all. All I want is enough to get one of those mining skips for belt running. Still so many rich rocks along the frontier line. Eventually hire some friends from back on the Iris platforms above Mars. So many good folks who just can't get work. Don't know when that'll be though. Every time I think I'm earning at a steady clip, the company finds another fine or features platform. Anyway, <laughs> I'll let you go back to it. Happy cutting. Blue out. Yeah. Work slaves. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. And of course, since they make so many, so, since they make so much, of, oh god, god, that's not what I wanted. Since they make so much of the, the ship breakers, it's in their best. It is fully in their interest to keep screwing them over, to keep making them money. Because yeah, once the ship breaker has 
paid off their debt. Uh, at that point, they're not uh, a sucker to milk anymore. Well, they'll still be a sucker to milk, but for a lot, lot less than before. And all of that money is suddenly going to the shipbreaker themselves. Supposedly. So yeah, we'll have to see just how much they try to screw us over. Because technically we are company property as a uh, spare or clone. So it could just be that they say once we have paid off our debts that uh, yeah, since we are property company, anything we make further goes directly to the company as well. If you wonder how long until there is a revolution? Yeah, we'll have to see if the story goes there because people are not happy with these things. Okay. There's the airlock, so we can immediately pluck off the button. Oh, I think I just had an idea for the perfect song when it happens. What then? Oh, a song by Volter called The Headless Waltz. Okay. <laughs> Uh, modern Voltaire or old Voltaire? Modern. Modern Voltaire. <laughs> okay. I've seen a good no. amount of his work, but not everything. Well, yeah, at least you would expect it to be a bit of a... What do you call it? Dark humor? Basically everything he makes is dark humor, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, true. Do he has... well... Okay, even the game parody of his own song that he, he parodied himself for a game was dark still. The Day of the Dead. Not surprising he would uh, make some <laughs> music for something like that. Yeah, it was for... Oh, Adventure Quest, I think. Okay. Back when it was just a Flash game, really, I think. Yeah, the original version is still a Flash game. I might have to actually check that since, well, Flash has been sort of killed off. Why, I still Ooh. don't actually understand. Yeah, good question. And I saw something weird on the ship. Yeah, it is, besides like... the ancient uh, chips. Well, beside that, I saw rust marks that looks like a bearded face. Okay. A little bit too much to be considered then dull. Because I make, kind of wonder if some of the developers had a little bit of fun with it. Good chance. Uh, I wonder if we can see that again, but I think it's above you on the outside. Okay, of the, of the panels that just flowed away. Okay. That's most. There's still some in the back here. Okay, once we start pulling on something, we can't we lose control of our thrusters for a bit. So it is best to just pull out things while you're floating still. And that probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, because now we now we need to go cut into the wall. <laughs> Wanted to throw it into the barge, but okay. <laughs> Let's see, pull you out. The seats are attached to the walls. So easy enough to get rid of this. Let's take a look for your rust beard. <laughs> There it is, right over the doorway. Which doorway? Um, the white block over the doorway, not that one, up a bit more. There, there, right okay. there. <laughs> Could you see it? Um, 
I don't recognize a beard in that. It looks more like America. Or North America. Uh, it looks like someone with a hair bone and beard. And a moustache, I guess. Dude, yeah, it looks like it just inside looks like a map. Uh, let's see, we have some 20 minutes left. Yeah, time does fly when you're just picking a ship apart like this. We should hear... Oh yeah, we've already hit enough points for the next certification, which should allow us to get access to, to the more difficult ships. They'll probably keep us with the mackerels for a good while more until we've cleared every type of hazards. Uh, going a bit slow, but uh, making sure we n know what we're dealing with at the very least. Yeah. Uh, so, these things may not be worth so much alone, but many of these small bits will become a lot of money. Yeah, technically speaking, if uh, the, the, during these shifts, uh, one to two million every time, uh, remove half a million on costs every time. So about yeah, a million and a half at the good end, on a good day. Then yeah, you should be able, you would be able to pay off the billion in like three years still. But I don't want that. Yeah, like I said, a shipbreaker in debt makes more money than a shipbreaker that's not in debt. A bit of aluminium. Not sure why I cut that free. Not oh well. Whee! Some stale chips. Away. That was close. Wait, those are chips. Yeah, it was a it oh. was a bag of something. Of course, it... a chunk of metal about to crush your visor. Yeah, it would have to hit at a very high speed to cause damage. At the very least, we can get these. We should be able to get these doors out a lot more easy, though. There is likely still a fuel cell at the other end. So instead, we're going in here. Up and away. It wasn't holding a power cell. Nope, otherwise, the lights would have turned off. Okay. Remove you. No need to pull the switch. Speaking of... You... How much are you worth, actually? Not a lot, if it's not, if it's not giving a notification. Furnace, processor... It usually give notification. Has it just not, just not hit the, the net yet? It has. Okay. Now let's see if this is... Oh, okay, we can't actually cut that. We... Yep. Above cut rates. So we'd have to... Cut like that to get this loose. How much are you worth? We've chucked a few of you in there. You are going in there. Okay, 3,000. And 4,000. And a little bit of carbon. Now you could chuck those into either then actually, though the furnace is worth more. Depends how much work you're willing to get with single credit. Yeah, we are running on the easiest mode with unlimited lives and such. And on the other modes, we'd be running on a five-minute timer 
I think, or five or ten minutes. Uh, so yeah, then you'd have to prioritize on what to get and everything. And since we're already at 12 minutes into this shift, uh, yeah, that should tell a bit of how you should... You shouldn't take uh, every little bit apart. And hello. Can I... Okay, you are just a pickup. A pickup you can only well pick up. So since we already got one of them, it probably won't give us anything new. And I very much doubt that uh, the transfer cost of sending that downstairs to Earth would be worth it. <laughs> and then again, maybe another shipbreaker will trade for it or something. Oh, it's worth a lot as collectible. Now, if it was the most popular, then it's probably had, like, millions of them produced. But still. If nothing else, we can hoard them. <laughs> See just with how many we can fill the hab. <laughs> yeah, then we're not a crazy cat lady, but we're a crazy bunny person. Hey. Was that yap at me? No. You sure? Yeah, if you want it to be, it can be a jab at you. I am proud owner, or was proud owner of two bunnies. Where is the hawk sisters? Those two were? Okay. And I don't think they knew they were hawk sisters. I don't think bunnies have the mental capacity to real realize uh, such things. Yeah, for we caught the uh, one hump in the other, and they were sisters. You sure they were both sisters? Because I'm pretty sure. Uh, we double checked. <laughs> okay, then they they definitely didn't have the smarts to realize. Well, they're both smarter than the average bunnies. The other way is just. Yeah, we never let them meet up with another bunny boy, so, yeah. I think so, they may have some um, frustrations. And so you had lesbian bunnies. I think it's worse than... Nothing wrong with lesbian, just probably there was a bit of incest in that case. <laughs> but they... they were... I don't know, they were kind of mortal enemies at first, but one time they actually dug into each other's cages, brought it out, then suddenly were fine with each other. Okay. And they wanted the strongest of course the one that was half blind. Yep. Get that back. That's the power cell on there. Uh, well, that's actually... Okay, it's light enough that we can actually drag it back out of the hell. Okay, I, I, sh I should have checked. Okay, it might be a little bit scorched. But yeah, anything we're throwing in there is getting a second-hand discount anyways. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Let's say this. The smallest one was the smartest one. For she hit me with a stick. Account credit applied. Okay, you sure you didn't have a cousin of Bugs Bunny? Pretty sure. Funny thing is, I was, uh, she lived in the bathroom. She had her own corner there, and uh, I was checking on her, and I was about to go and wash my hands. And so I noticed something hitting me off my leg. And then down there, I see her with a huge twig. She had gnawed up a pot a lot. I was still whole, and she was bashing me with it. And she did not stop until I filled her food bowl. <laughs> okay, you, ha you, you had a bunny that was smart enough to uh, <laughs> assault you for food. Yeah, here's the thing. When it comes to rabbits, my family have weird ones. My mother's bunny ate after eight chocolates. 
you know, Jay, hey, well, sure most fine. animals don't. <laughs> Most animals shouldn't get chocolate because they yeah, they can't uh, process it. Most animals can't handle could. processed foods. He could apparently, and he even got his head stuck in a box once when he tried to steal chocolate from one one of my mother's friends. <laughs> okay, did he want to become an Easter Bunny chocolates or something? No idea. But that's not all. Well, well, my our bunnies like the popcorn. And one time they, we actually dropped a wine gum, and we yeah, did realize there was a half eaten wine gum. After we were wondering why was the, uh, the, the bigger bunny running back and forth like crazy. It's trigger high. Yeah. He even tackled the door. <laughs> and now, to grand finale, my dad's bunnies. They ate. Balloonies and meatballs. Okay. Uh, did you get your? <laughs> did they get his rabbits from Spamalot or something? No idea. Uh, yeah, animals can be weird as all hell. Yeah. I think that last pony that my younger brothers had. Well, I don't think it was not too much crazy about him. Besides, he just wanted to hump everything. That's so but that's, the usual. Yeah, that's a bit more usual, at least. Oh, we missed one of there. Okay. I'm guessing it, in some cases it would help to keep these parts attached still, so they wouldn't move around too much, and not that way you wouldn't risk dumping the whole thing into the freaking furnace. Oh dear. But, yeah, macros are easy enough and yeah, they don't reach all the way to the back like some, you know, like some, yeah, some ship types do. Hmm. Oh god. But yeah, people, about bunnies, never, when, let's see this, when you think if you put a thing, bunnies are stupid. Think again. That's the, the moment they will strike. Yeah, intelligence can differ a lot between animals because. Uh, I, have, have I ever told you about Zoe, one of the, our, the, our cats? I, I let's see. Inky and Oscar. No, you have never told me was Zoe. Okay, that that was one of our previous cats, and I might have actually told a story about her though. Uh, does uh, scratch scratch boom scratch scratch boom say anything to your memory? Nope. Okay, because well, Zoe, she was an absolute idiot of a cat. <laughs> Simply no other way around it. Uh, yeah. We have a glass table, and even though she sat on it like every, like hundreds of times, uh, at one point she still just tried to jump up through it. Uh, <laughs> she was also dumb enough to go sleep in an open window, like five stories up or so. Ooh. And yeah, she rolled out. She, she did survive. Uh, no major injuries. Uh, Mostly just the, the pads of our feet that were hurt. And uh, yeah, that, that window was kept closed after that. But the stupidest thing that she ever did was uh, one time in the... Those were cases... No, uh, the, the glass... The table one, that was a modern case in the, our current house. Uh, the, the window one was at our previous house. Um, because, yeah, then we lived on the, you know, a row of houses on top of each other, and I, okay, that's, yeah, that's gone into the, the wrong place. Oh, well. Uh, in, yeah, this story is also of the modern house that we live in now, where we, I'm actually living on the second floor. Uh, actually, uh, I always get confused with this. There's some place where you have the ground floor, then above that the first floor and such. Where I'm now uh, is the... Uh, would be considered the first floor there. But generally... The over, 
Yeah. I th uh, so yeah, this would... Uh, over here, at least, I think we call it just... The ground floor is the first floor, then the second floor, and I'm on the second floor then. Uh, and yeah, the previous place, uh, I think... Uh, there were... Uh, rows of houses and then a second layer on top, sort of. So that would have been the sixth floor that she fell out of, I think, then. Um, anyways, that's off the point. The, I'll tell the Scratch Scratch Boom story then. Because the stupidest thing that Zoe ever did was when my mother was uh, filling the dryer with clothing to be, well, dried. But while she was doing that, she remembered she had left some elsewhere, so she went to grab that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, she turned around, grabbed that, and put that in as well. And then she put turned the dryer on, and most people probably might have guessed by now what happened. So she turns away again, as the thing is uh, starting up. And, oh, the... And then, then it starts making strange noises, like scratch, scratch, boom, scratch, scratch, boom. So she turns right back around, turns that thing off, opens it off, and what little fluffy idiot walks out all annoyed, and uh, there's her fur fluffed up? Zoe. <laughs> in the, in like the, the seconds that she had her back turned, the idiot climbed into the dryer, got another you know, load dumped on top of her, and she went for, like, at max five spins or so. So, yeah, she was <laughs> annoyed, but she was unharmed, mostly. Except for pride. Well, she was a bit too dumb to have pride, I'd say. Oh, come on. If you're someone so dumb that don't have pride, that, that's dumb. Yes, she was a bit of a... A genetic mongrel. Like, she had traits of uh, tabby cats to her, like red tabbies, even though she was a female, as well as. Uh, um, I'm, I'm blanking out what the translation would be. Wait, wait, wait. What does tabby in female may have to do with anything? Yeah, red, red. You know, red cats and such? Uh, yeah. Like, 90% of the time, those are males. Like, oh. uh, female red cats are an extreme rarity, I think. And, well, she had as she had aspects of uh, red cats, and more than she was more orange, but also at least two other species mixed in. Like, her, the main part of her body was spotted and such, but her tail was striped. And, yeah... Her head was just way too small for the rest of her body as well. <laughs> and beyond that, her tail was freaking flat. Flat? Yeah, not like... You know, mostly with the fur and such. Like, with most cats, it could just be because she was lazy as all hell and just laid most of the days. But, uh, yes, she was a bit of a mongrel, and... Yeah, they were showing in the intelligence part as well, like I said, with the freaking glass table. <laughs> uh, still, uh, uh, still an absolute... Uh, yeah, still a, a great cat, just stupid as all hell. Too... <laughs> Level 5. And let's see what that unlocks for us. Since we are at the two hour marks now. Good morning, shipbreaker. Lynx mandates a maximum of eight hours of sleep. Any extra sleep time will be docked from the next pay cycle. Uh, of course. It's a new ship mackerel heavy cargo. It's a robust model built to transport heavy industrial goods or hazardous materials. Grapple strength can be upgraded to improve handling of its heavy structural elements. On behalf of my former colleague Renda, we apologize for misstating the fuel efficiency of this model. In fact, it is positively adequate for the transport needs of many companies. 
Ted Holiday, Senior Marketing Associate, Klein Co. Uh, oh, and another new type, the Javelin Tanker, small. Javelin from Helix Heavy Industries is a heavy, is a highly modular, multi-purpose ship type, primarily used for industrial purposes. The tanker model is a mobile fuel platform. Beware of extensive fire hazards on board. An entry-level version of our tanker was easy to create by simply stripping out expensive creature comforts, cup holders, padded seats, safety features, and so on. Over on Asodi, CEO Helix Heavy Industries. Uh, I... If humanity isn't going extinct in this universe, I don't know if it should continue to exist or not at this rate. Okay. Yeah. Bloody heck. Hazard level four with access to the third. Welcome you to the ranks of high potential high earners. The extraction of reactors from ships is one of the most valuable duties our employees can perform. We expect the utmost care when engaging with the variety of reactor setups you will encounter. Retrieval of an intact reactor is your highest priority during every salvage operation. It is advised to clear a direct path for, to the barge for the safest extraction. Reactors will become unstable once removed from their protective housing and can cause severe damage to surrounding objects. Yeah, this is where things would really get started. Oh, and a new sticker. Here a cutter mentioned the word beer. Come on. Uh, yeah, I believe class one reactors like we'll find for now. Though I think those were worth half a million on their own. It could be that they have been upgraded. So yeah, technically speaking, if you could just get into a ship where remove the floor of the reactor room and then just pull out the reactor into the barge, you'd have your daily costs covered. Everything else would be extra. If it is still half a million. Bloody heck. Still no messages. Red seal, gecko. Okay, that's where. Let's see. This will show ship grade four, javelin unlocked, mackerel heavy, javelin tanker unlocked, tools, stinger range one unlocked. Okay, so this will show what we get access to on each point. Tether amount upgrades, object scanner, stinger range. Okay, I. I think this is where we'll get access to tethers. And the uh, audio recent. Thrusters, split saw range, nothing too important. Modular cutter, cooldown, no. Charged push. Charged push is really is reasonably useful since well it, it'll let you shove things to the processors more quickly. Systems unlock. That'll be useful in well not blowing yourself up. And, uh, Strengths. Demo charge is at level 11. Okay. Then we have the geckos at level 15 or 14. And what is this 9 here? Grandmaster Shipbreaker at the very end at level 30. Okay. Wait, I just realized something about the computer. Hmm? Look at the keyboard. It's dirty as all hell. Yeah. And how tiny. Many, how many keyboards buttons do you see? Far too few. Yeah, then you see the problem here. And while we stare out like this, uh, yeah. I'm a bit annoyed that we had to start over, but the, ch the big changes with the habitat and such does explain it somewhat. Uh, there's likely a bunch of stuff that will happen in here. Well, eventually, like all of the stuff that we you know, will collect over time. It, yeah, it squeaks when we move past at times. <laughs> or every time. <laughs> but yeah, it, it shouldn't take too long to get through Act 1 again, though hopefully when they release Act 3, it they won't delete all of our progress if they do. Then I'll just play through Acts 1 and 2 again off stream 
because by that point we'll have seen it twice. It, we ha will have seen all of this twice, and I'll not show it a, a third time. <laughs> <clears throat> Or let them add something new to the, all the chapters. Mm, we'll have to see if they've added anything to this chapter. And if they do, they'll probably put it in the patch notes. But that's an if, and we'll, so we'll have to see when and if that will happen. True. No mysterious flash this time. But uh, yeah. This has been Saturday Sideshow with Heartspace Shipbreaker again, number fourth. Yeah, the fourth stream with uh, this game. And yeah, next week we'll continue our race through Act 1 again. See if there's anything new. And yeah. yeah. Uh, no idea how long we'll be busy with this now this time. Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> But for now, though, we'll see all of that next week and the weeks following that. For now, though, uh, thank you for watching La uh, Lack Track. Uh, seems you are probably gone, but oh well. Thank you all the same, as well as the same to anyone else who has been watching now or later. And as always, special thanks to you, the gear. You're most welcome, my friend. And yeah, tomorrow, probably a bit of a different stream because we'll be inviting another friend of ours in for some chatting so i'm not sure if we'll do the usual of uh, four uh, up to four games to see how well they'd be for streaming maybe we'll do something else we'll see what they'd want to do so yeah but we'll see that then and as always until then until then be safe folks <laughs> <laughs>